baseball associations are only as strong as their volunteers, and we've got one of the best in the country joining us this evening in 2017 Baseball Canada Volunteer of the Year Award winner, Louis Cote. Louis is president of the Carillon Baseball League, and he's also the vice president coaching with Baseball Manitoba. He's been at the forefront of growth and expansion in the region where hundreds of kids have been able to enjoy the great game of baseball. His innovative ideas and reception to change have improved programs, leagues, and associations across Manitoba for the betterment of the game. He's also a huge champion of Baseball Canada's Grand Slam program, which is a follow-up program to our ever popular Rally Cap Initiation Baseball program, which we're gonna hear about a little bit later. So today, Louis is going to talk to us about elevating your local baseball association. And again, if you have any questions for Louis, please use the Q&A feature and we'll try to get to as many of those as we can towards the end of Louis's presentation. Louis, uh, welcome. And uh, the screen is all yours. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, thanks for the kind words as well. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Andre Lachance and Baseball, Man Baseball Canada for, for asking me to do this presentation. Uh, I'm really excited. That's an understatement probably, you know, to have uh, the experts that are on the panel and all the experts in the crowd here tonight and to be able to be talking baseball is, is terribly exciting for me. I'm very passionate about baseball. And um, another thing this allowed me to do is um, putting this presentation together. It gave me the chance to reflect on, on what we've done in our, in our baseball organization over, over the last 10 to 15 years. And, uh, and I hadn't really done that before. So I got to look at what we've done and some of the results and it was very exciting for me. So I'd like to thanks for that opportunity. So just some tidbits about myself here. Um, I guess one thing that happened to me young in life, I was lucky to realize that uh, I wasn't as good a hockey player as I thought I was. And I was able to focus a little more on baseball and um, I was able to get a university education out of that. I was able to go to Valley City State and play baseball, uh, which is a great experience. And most importantly, it, it got me an education. Um, I'm not quite sure if I would have uh, been able to graduate university without having that carrot of, of playing baseball there in front of me. So uh, that, that really helped me and I've been able to teach for, I've been a teacher for 25 years now. As was mentioned, I'm involved with the Brokery Minor Baseball as well. That's my hometown here. We've got about 500 to 1,000 people living in town. Our baseball organization, we find a way to get close to 100 kids playing as well. And then as well as Carillon Minor Baseball, which is our regional and baseball Manitoba. So the current system for baseball in Manitoba, so we've got Baseball Can on the top, just like all the other provinces. Uh, underneath that, we've got Baseball Manitoba. Baseball Manitoba sets the rules and guidelines for the province. The rules are basically set up for what we're going to use in the provincials. And then they highly suggest how, how we play the game in our local regions. Now we've got 13 regions in the province and we have some flexibility in program delivery there. And, and the beauty of that is, is we're able to experiment a bit because we can get things through our, uh, our organization that would be very, very hard to pull off at a provincial or a national level. So we're able to experiment locally and, and we've had a lot of success with that. Another benefit for us is because it's, it's small towns, as you can see from 500 to 3000 in each community, uh, players get to play both regional, which is AAA, and local baseball because we need them for our numbers. So that's a really neat system we have set up. So back in 2008, um, so we actually thought we weren't doing that bad as an organization, um, but uh, as, we, as we found out in the future, we, we weren't doing very well at all. Uh, we had low numbers in the community. Um, we didn't have many kids playing regional baseball. We weren't getting the top athletes in the region. And the biggest thing, there wasn't a team-like atmosphere from, from our local associations to our to, to the Carillon Minor Baseball Association and even to Baseball Manitoba. There wasn't trust between the three, so um, that led to not much success locally and, and no success on the ball field. So we had two basic goals. We wanted to increase the amount of kids playing baseball in Carillon and improve the quality of player being developed in Carillon. So I figured I'd start you off with some, some stats here, just so you, saw, you can see how, how we had some success. If you look back from 2005 to 2012, um, there wasn't much movement, little up, little down. And I think the assumption could have been made back then that 
you know, we should be happy with around 800 kids playing baseball in our region. But then as you, as you can see, after 2013, we, we exploded. And by 2017, we had, we had doubled in, in 10 years. Um, again, I, I didn't realize how, how much we had grew. You, you move from a year to year basis, but seeing this, seeing this graph and putting the numbers together was, was really eye opening for me. Um, one thing I'd like to point out too, is it's, it tends to be a, a theory in Canada that baseball organizations numbers do well based on how well the Blue Jays do. Well, if you look um, to between 2012 and 14, the Blue Jays weren't terribly successful in the field. They were struggling underneath 500 and our numbers grew at that time. So we didn't really follow that trend. Not that we weren't cheering for them, of course. Improve the game was our first action. Now, when I, when I talk about improving the game, um, don't get me wrong. The game of baseball is a beautiful game and, and, I, and I love it. And so does everybody else in the listening here tonight. But the one thing is at the youth level, it's not, not quite enough action there uh, compared to sports like hockey and soccer. And the, and the kids have a little bit of trouble with the lack of action. And, and it's terribly important for us to add action so that they're still with us when we get to, to the 13U and the 15U level when the game gets more normalized. So how are we going to improve the game? Like the first thing we realized is we have experts at our exposal and that was uh, Baseball Canada. So the Baseball Canada long-term athlete development plan was outstanding. We read that and basically anything we did locally or provincially was based on that plan. The rally cap program, we jumped into that pretty much right away. Great program. Rally cap got, and our numbers went up because of it. We had more kids involved. Also, it gets them involved at an earlier age and allows some adults to get involved in the game as well. Grand Slam program, I'll talk a little more about Grand Slam on the next slide. And then, of course, the pitch count rules in my first pitch program. So it, it was kind of interesting when, uh, when we talk about this in the meetings, because, you know, not everybody's going to be on board, of course, right? And I had one person there that said to me, you know, you and your Baseball Canada stuff and your research. He goes, I have the feeling that if a guy told you to jump off a bridge, you would jump off the bridge. <laughs> and I said, well, uh, I think, first of all, I, I wouldn't jump right away, but I would listen to him. And if, if he had some good information for me and I realized that I was probably better off jumping off that bridge, I would be jumping. But we did make changes, without a doubt. So our modifications to 9U, we, we were playing Grand Slam baseball before um, Baseball Canada came out with the Grand Slam product. Um, the bike product of this is basically there was more fun, there was more activity, there was more development opportunities. And one of the big byproducts was we were developing more coaches because our original rookie program was 10 players. Once you have 10 players, you're probably going to have 12 players on the team. So when we had one coach, so now we had at least two coaches for the six man team and that, that paid off in the long run for us. Um, I, I would highly suggest Grand Slam program to anybody who's not playing that out there. I, I think that's uh, one of the staples of our of the Baseball Canada. Our modifications to 11U, um, what we did is instead of walking on ball four, we put a T on home plate and the players had to hit the ball. So the ball was played just as if they hit it off the pitcher. If they grounded out to short and was, were thrown out at first base, they were out. So what this did was this brought a tremendous amount of activity to the game that we weren't getting with a walk to first base. It improved the pitching because the kids weren't necessarily scared of walking anymore. And they were, and they were excited to get on the mound. Proved base running because we had more base runners. It proved fielding, hitting, everything all improved. And you can see we did some modifications at 13U as well. And, and the main thing was we were stressing fundamentals over winning. And all these modifications were based on improved fundamentals. They weren't based on preparing our teams to compete in provincials. And that came up when we would talk about changes at the 11U and 13U level. People would say, how can we expect to compete at the provincial level if we're not playing the same game that, are going, that is going on at the provincials? Well, ironically, we weren't competing anyways, which we didn't know at the time. But um, our thought was we're not basing our, the way we're playing the ball out here on the 12 kids that are going to provincials. We're basing the game on all the kids that are playing at that age group and developing more baseball players. And our thought is with these, these modifications, our teams will be more successful at the provincial level as well. 
Another action, another action was providing support to local associations. Uh, again, putting a strong emphasis on the importance of fundamental skills and development, not winning. We stress this to the reps from each association that would come to our meetings. We ask them to stress to the members of their board. And we ask them, the members of the board, to stress to their coaches and their parents and their players in their community that we're working on becoming better baseball players, not necessarily winning games. A lot of the other stuff we did was based on improving organization, but a big one was the promotion of small teams. Um, baseball typically has nine players on the field. Uh, teams would have, you know, 10, 11, 12 players at times. You get, well, you can't have a team. If you have 14 players, you can't have a team of two teams of nine. So they'd be making one team of 14, which is non-productive. 14 players, five on the bench, you're not getting anywhere. So we encourage uh, our associations to have two teams of seven players or two teams of eight or whatever work out and modifications we did with that we'd say okay when you get to the other town and you're playing they've got a couple extra players on the bench and they're batting they can play outfield for you we're not going to punish you by having the eight and nine spot in the order as an out so the fact that we weren't focusing on winning allowed us to have a lot more fundamental opportunities for the players improve public relations the media was a big thing we did here. We went after the local newspaper and local radio, always giving them stories. We, we were calling them, not waiting for them to call us. In fact, the newspaper, we would actually create stories for him or, or get started stories and then he would finish them off, which he, which he loved. So we were in the paper on a weekly basis and now we actually have a, an interview once a week on the, on the radio. So those were good marriages for us to get involved in. At the provincial level, uh, Baseball Manitoba, got going with social media. So at our own local level, uh, we have social media. We've got a person running our Twitter account and so forth, but it, it's nothing as elaborate of what Baseball Manitoba put together. Um, I'm not an expert at this one, but I think it's very important to have this on here because that's the way of the future. Um, what I was doing 15 years ago was sending notes home in schools. That's not something we're gonna be doing now. We're using social media to our advantage. So Baseball Manitoba hired a full-time position, sorry, hired a media and a communications coordinator to run this part of our program. Started off in 2018 as a, as a quarter-time position, up to 50%, and now it's a 100% position. We just named that in two, 2021, and I believe she just recently got a spot in the office as well. So things are really moving up for that. So again, this is the way to go. This is, you really need to look at that for your organization. Improve the coaching. We did not have good coaching in our region. Uh, one reason was because our, uh, for the, I'll say 20 years before that, uh, fastball was the big game in the region for, for males and females. So a lot of our new coaches had never even played baseball. So um, they, they were lacking, lacking the knowledge, we'll say, to be coaching at a grassroots level. And um, so what we did for them is we, we would have a season startup coach meeting. So it was facilitated by a league executive that was also a, what we would call an expert coach. And he would go over the rules. He would go over the coaching tips. He would, he would make it an easy season to, to walk into the season. So they'd be ready to roll and have the confidence to go and, and coach the kids of that age group. We also developed handbooks for each level. So if you can see on the right, we've got uh, Grand Slam coaches information. So that's, uh, that's an example of what we had put together locally. And then Baseball Manitoba actually put that on their website for all the Grand Slam teams in the province now. So we've got one of those going for 9U, 11U, and 13U. It's a, basically a two or three pager, all the important aspects of the season and the things they should be focusing on. At the grassroots level, we also offered a My First Pitch Plus program. Well, I shouldn't say offered. We, we, we basically mandated it. We, had a, we created a regional pitching coach and he would go to each community and he would run a, um, my first pitch program for the 11U and 13U coaches and players. And, and that improved our coaching quite a bit. So we also recruited the best coaches, um, AAA level and local level. We were, we were really reinforcing the fact that you, you can't wait for people to come to you. You have to call them. So regionally, we would recruit guys, not necessarily people who were coaching in other regions already, but people that we would... We would uh, look at as, as possible potential coaches. So former players, um, dads or moms in the area that had showed that they have some talent towards coaching and, and we trained them. And what we found is uh, 
this past season, four of the coaches that we developed were members of Team Manitoba coaching staffs. So that had come a long way. Basically making a good environment, providing support for them. Player development opportunities was really lacking in our region. So at the time, we had one AAA team at each level. So 13U, 15U, and 18U, and that was it. So basically, there was community baseball in May and June. And I mentioned that the AAA team's players played there, but then their season went into July. So 12 players at each age group was pl were playing into the month of July. So we realized we had to create more opportunities. So we created a 13U AA team. So this would be players that weren't on the AAA team. This started in 2013, and we only had 20 kids that tried out for AAA. So 12 players on AAA, we only had eight. We, we had to go out and recruit players for this AA team. So other regions in the province were cutting players because they had lots. We had to go out and recruit. So first two years we had to recruit and then it caught on. And 15 U, we started a double A team in 2016 and 18 U in 2017. Now we're at the point where we still have our 15 U and 18 U double A teams. But this past season we had three double A 13 U teams. So we were developing another 36 players at a high level. To give these guys a place to play, we created and hosted a provincial 13U AA prospect showcase. So basically, uh, this was towards the end of July. We had teams enter. It wasn't, uh, you weren't coming there to win a provincial. You were basically saying what level you thought you'd be, how good your team was. And we set up four exhibition games for each team. First year, there's 12 teams, and then uh, it just caught on. And within a year, it had tripled in size, and we added the 11U and the 15U level. So, um, COVID, of course, got in the way of that the last two seasons here, but uh, we're really excited to see where that program is going to be in 2022. Another big thing for our region was a nonprofit uh, fall baseball program. So this ran from August to October. Uh, so now our players, instead of playing baseball in only May and June, our players were playing actually from April because we moved AAA up. So from April to the end of October. So the amount of reps that they were getting in these extra months was outstanding and the extra coaching because we had good coaches running this fall baseball program. But we also developed more coaches because we needed more people helping. We had dads, we had moms helping out, and we had younger players coming out there and helping out with this program as well. So not only was it a player development piece, it was a coach development piece as well. So some evidence of success. So um, our 2002 birth year, the reason we're using that group was because they were the first ex been exposed to all the different uh, programs that we ran, Rally Cap, Grand Slam, uh, changes at 11U, and they were also involved in that AA 13U team, and they had AA teams all the way up. So as you can see, this, this team had had some success along the way. I'll highlight a couple. The big one was 2016, where they won gold at the 14U Manitoba Summer Games. So four years earlier, our region finished last. Um, I have to say, it, it wasn't the coaching, at least for the winning part, because I was involved in that staff, but I was also involved in the staff four years earlier. And I can say that there was probably two players from that first team in 2012 that would have had a chance to make the 2016 team. So we were just developing way more players. Uh, in 2020, so the now these players had moved up to 18 new AAA, and and we shouldn't have been surprised that, that they would do, be successful. And they finished undefeated in league play and they lost in the final. But the key piece here was four of the top players from, from those previous teams didn't play. Two guys moved up to play junior only. The other two guys decided to focus on hockey. So we lost our four best players from the team. Four or five years ago, if we lost the four best players off our team, it would have been catastrophic. We probably wouldn't have had a team. And, and now we had the same results even though we lost our four top players. So we were able to develop players to fill these holes and still stay successful. Again, we didn't focus on winning, but we got some results. This piece here, I didn't, well, first of all, I didn't realize the lack of success we had for the 20 years before 2014. And I didn't realize how much success we had in the following five years. So that, that showed that we we're on the right track. And again, even though we weren't focusing on winning Baseball Manitoba Provincials, the, the results were there and we were developing baseball players. I really like our 2021 results because our, our one of the sub goals was to create 
triple A teams at each level, 13U, 15U, 18U, that will be successful on a year to year basis, not just based on, on one group getting lucky or having some good athletes. And this, this showed that we were successful at, at all three teams. Region of the Year by Baseball Manitoba, that, that's a huge award and we got that four times. And so that, that's given out by the Baseball Manitoba Executive as well as uh, the, the main office. And so these people, they, they know what's going on in the province and they, they were able to see what we were doing. And um, actually, I think one reason we got a lot of those awards were, was because of our, our programs being adopted at the provincial level and, and help create, helping create change at the provincial level. So how do we promote positive change? So the first thing we had to do was create a level of trust from the top down. So we, we realized that we couldn't just walk into the boardroom and say, hey, we're good guys, trust us. We, we had to find a way to get this trust and develop it. So the first thing was being consistent and authentic in all our decisions. Fundamentals not winning, fundamentals not winning. You've heard that quite often here today. And that we just, all our decisions were based on those. And if we would have started making decisions that weren't based on those two, I, I think we would have had some issues with that. We picked our battles, um, believing that success breeds confidence. So for example, um, when, we, when we decided to go to the six man, nine U program, um, I guess I, that was sort of my baby, I guess you could say at the time. Um, I really wanted to, wanted to get to that program going, but I also knew there would be some resistance along the way. So I had spoken to a couple association presidents before the meeting, explained to them what I would have liked to see in our region and asked them if they would be willing to join my association in making a, a mini league if we didn't get through this in the meeting. And so therefore we went in the meeting, sure enough, um, some people weren't interested in this program. They didn't think it was the way to go. So I was able to suggest, hey, let's, why don't we just have two leagues? We'll offer both and we'll see what happened. And we did that. So we had one six player nine U league and we had a nine to 10 player nine U league. So the interesting part was after that year, the convener of the 10 man who was the most adamant against the six player game suggested to our whole league at our league meeting that we go only to six player nine U baseball. So we had made a believer of him in one year because he thought it was such a much better program. Um, getting information to people is important, important and actually sharing information. So we had meetings. We didn't necessarily schedule meetings, but we would have phone calls. We would have groups of people getting together, always discussing what we're, what's going on in our region. How can we improve our region? So the ideas were constantly being spoken about. They weren't only just being brought up in a meeting. And Baseball Manitoba actually took this to another level. So I believe that the last seven years, Baseball Manitoba has held hot stove sessions at our annual meeting. So people come in and it's a risk-free environment. You bring up ideas. So some of the ideas that we've, well, actually all the ideas that we've developed, we would present at meetings like that. People would talk about it. Some regions would go back and adopt it to their programs. Some wouldn't. A lot of the great ideas that Baseball Manitoba has put forward and not just uh, ideas I'm bringing up this evening here. There's been a lot of great things happening in Manitoba the last four or five years, and the majority of those ideas started in hot stove sessions. We were very strategic when we were presenting the idea. So, uh, so six little points here that um, we, we would follow with our strategies. So the, the first one is, is asking a critical friend for feedback. So I learned this uh, as a teacher. I was a phys ed teacher for many years, and one year I had a presentation to make. I thought my presentation and idea was awesome, and this was based on phys ed. It had nothing to do with baseball. And um, I went to one of my colleagues that I trusted. I said, what do you think of this idea here? And he said, well, I think it looks great. He says, but take it to Dave. He'll find something wrong with it. Dave was our critical teacher on staff, and so I took it to Dave, and sure enough, he, he poked a lot of holes in my presentation. So I was able to take that back, fix the holes, and then when I presented to the group that I had to, I was ready and it went very well. So we've done that quite often in our group. We've asked critical friends for feedback before we presented to our group. Explaining why it's a good idea and how it aligns with the needs of the group. So again, fundamentals not winning. Does this follow fundamentals not winning? If it doesn't, it's not coming to the floor. Also following the Baseball Canada Long-Term Athlete Development Plan. If it fits in there, it can fit in for us. If it doesn't fit in there, we're probably not going to follow through with this idea. 
We promoted widespread positive discussion. So I, almost every group we're in in life, every, uh, there's always a loudest person in the group. And typically that loudest person is usually the one that's against change the most. So we wouldn't give that person the floor first. We, we would present our idea and say, is there any positives with this idea that people see in the group? So now people were telling us what was good about the idea, what they liked about the idea. It was very easy for a lot of the group to talk because it's hard for some people to come up and say what's bad with an idea, but they like talking about what's good. So we built up a lot of momentum in that meeting with all these positives coming out of the room. And then we would let that guy have the floor because we needed our critical guy in the room to be able to pick things apart as well. So we said, is, is there anything that could, not necessarily negatives, but what could hold us back or what would be wrong with this idea here? And then we would use that against the positives and, and try and mold that into a, a good plan for us. We eased into change when necessary. So I, I use that example about the, the nine-year program, um, only half the league doing it the first year. Uh, same thing when we made modifications at the 11-year level. Um, brought the idea to the floor about the person batting after after uh, ball four wasn't going that well, so we made two leagues once again. Half did one way, half did the other way, and then the second season we actually everybody did it for half the season, and then for the second half of the season, people decided if they wanted to go with regular baseball rules or stick with the modified. And then by the fourth season, I believe we decided we were doing modified rules through the whole regular season but not the provincial playdowns, of course, because we were deciding there how, who was going to get all the provincials at that time. We also reassured, reassured people that, and this was actually the way we moved on and people understood that we, we give them evidence for this, I guess you could say, is that change is not necessarily permanent. The plan can go back to the original or we can be modified. So basically any idea that we brought to the floor that was accepted never went back to the original. The option was there though, but it was modified. So, for example, at the 13U level, uh, we felt that players were taking too big of a lead. So they weren't learning proper base running because they were too far off the base and, and they really weren't even leaving at the right time. So we got rid of the, the lead, we said that players had to stay on the base until the pitcher had committed to home plate. Pitchers still had to pitch from the stretch, so they had to commit to home plate. So basically for a righty, they lift their left leg, then the player could take a secondary lead or he could steal at that time. After that season, there was some feedback that, you know, um, kids like the lead. That's one of the things they feel like they're playing real baseball when they get the lead. So then we brainstormed a bit and we came up with the idea that six foot lead is the maximum. So we thought, how are we going to police this? But our coaches did. Coaches made sure their players took six foot leads and we were still getting the same benefit that we wanted out of teaching base running. The key reason for success was Regardless of any plans we had or how we presented this, the, the ability of all our stakeholders, the board, the reps, the local associations, coaches, parents, players, and baseball Manitoba, the ability for them to trust, to embrace, and participate in these changes, we suggested for regional improvement. We're the reason that we were successful. It's the reason we've got more players. It's the reason that we've got better players right now. This quote was said to me about four or five years ago, and it, it really hit home when the, when the coach said it to me. He said, I, I've learned over the past few seasons that the more I focus on winning today, the less chance my team has of winning in the future. Now, this, this guy was a coach that at 9U, he would have probably focused on winning. And the fact that he, he made this, he told me this quote, it described exactly what we wanted to achieve. So I was very quick to call the members of our board and tell them that this quote I had heard and I was able to remember to have it in our, in our presentation today because I thought it was outstanding. So we're always looking to get better, though. So um, I went to the ABCA Coaches Convention in Dallas a few years ago. And since we've got a bunch of baseball nuts on this conference call here tonight, a Zoom call here tonight, um, highly recommend you go to that if you haven't had a chance to go to. Four days of baseball coaches' presentations, new technology. It was like a form of heaven for me. I just for, just loved the four days that I was there. It was outstanding. And while I was there, there was a presentation on how to improve your organization. So I figured, well, I'm going to go to this and see if I can learn anything. Or actually, it was more of a checklist to see if we were doing things right. So the, the presenter was, was saying a lot of the things that we were saying here today, public relations, marketing, 
working with your volunteers and so forth. And I'm checking, checking, checking. And so, oh, geez, we're doing really good here. Then the president, then, then he said, uh, well, the president of the organization makes $20,000 a year. <laughs> so I guess I realized I wasn't doing everything right in our organization because none of our guys were getting any money at all. We were all volunteers. So thanks very much for this chance to talk tonight. I really enjoyed this. And before I get into any questions, um, we've got our website up there and that's my email address. So if anybody has, has any questions that, or would like to talk to me, feel free to send me an email and I can even connect with you with, uh, uh, with a phone call or something. So thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Louis. Um, we are up against the clock a little bit. First of all, your presentation was outstanding and there were um, a few questions. So I just want to leave this slide up um, so people can take note of your uh, of your contact information. And, and one of the questions that did come in, uh, actually a couple of them came in with the same theme was, can we get a copy of these slides? And uh, we, we will make them available because after all, we are, we are um, uh, doing this to, to benefit the Canadian baseball community and, and share resources and information. And one of the other things that I will mention too is that we uh, are recording all of the sessions. So they will be available soon on our YouTube page because I think it's really important not only to, to look at the slides, but really hear the context around it that you so beautifully explained tonight, Louis. So um, again, thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, unfortunately, we, we are scheduled to move on to our next presenter right now. So hopefully folks have had the opportunity to, to get your contact information because uh, as I explained earlier, you are a, a tremendous resource, uh, not only in your, your local, your, your province, but I think you're gonna be uh, nationally as well. So Louis, uh, thank you so much, and uh, we wish you nothing but the best. Have a great night. Thank you very much.